you 180 youth fam we are so glad that you are here i know it looks a little bit different tonight but it's so good to see you so i'm so glad that you've joined in for youth group it's so important to stay connected to that community so thank you so much for making that a priority make sure that you stay on because we're gonna have an awesome time of worship we're gonna have an awesome q a with pastor tyler and then we're gonna have jump on zoom and have great discussions we can finally see everybody face to face so make sure you jump on those today and today we have as I said we have Pastor Tyler here he is our district youth director so he's kind of in charge of our kids our youth departments throughout the whole state so he's awesome he also happens to be my brother in case you didn't know so we have an awesome time that I get to hang out with my brother but I also get to um, just yeah talk to you guys too and hang out for the night it's gonna be an awesome awesome night I'm so glad that you guys are here so Without further ado, here is my brother, Tyler Tufty. Hey, what's up, 180 Youth family? It's your district youth director, Pastor Tyler. I'm so excited to be with you guys tonight. This is a special, special opportunity to be with you as we're celebrating social distancing. So this is as close as I'm allowed to get to you, but it's going to be close enough because tonight we get to worship. We're going to have some fun Q&A. It's going to be a great night. But first of all, let's just dig into worship. You might not know the words. You might not know the song, uh, but just tune everything else out and focus in on Jesus on this moment, okay? It's going to be just a few minutes, but let's just give Jesus everything we have. Try your best to sing. That just focuses our mind and it brings a song to Jesus. If you don't know the words, you can sing your own words. But just talk to Jesus in this moment, all right? Let's sing together. consuming fire in victory you reign we 
triumph in your name. Jesus, our great defender, you conquer death forever. In victory you reign. We triumph in your name.
pray that that's what you are saying to God. So yes, I will. Yes, I will. students, God, who are cooped up at home and not getting able to be out with friends and do a lot of things. God, I just pray that no matter what's going on, that they would say, yes, I will. With their life, with their actions, with their words, that everything about them would say, yes, Jesus, whatever you want for me, that's what I want. And God, make that our heart. Make that our heart. We want it. We want what you want for us, not our own selfish desires, not the way we think it's supposed to go, but whatever you want for us, even if it's difficult, even if it's hard, even if it's scary, Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Lord, be with us tonight through this Q&A, and uh, I pray that you would speak to every student that's tuned in tonight, that's watching. I pray you would be with them and that you would speak to their heart, challenge them in some way. Even though we're apart, Lord, it, we know that the Holy Spirit is with us in each room, in each home, in each car, no matter where we're watching right now. We know that your Holy Spirit is with us, and uh, we're so grateful for that, Lord. Your Holy Spirit is what knits us together. So be with us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us. I can't wait to hear how and where you worshiped and how that all went. I love that. So now we're going to jump into kind of a devotional time, a Q&A with Pastor Tyler. And so just lean in, hear what um, kind of he has to say, his wisdom, kind of his experience. He's been in youth ministry for many, many years. Old, you, can so... <laughs> see the you can see the grays in my beard. <laughs> So you, it, this is a treat, and it's so fun. I love I'm still learning from my brother, so it's so fun to just hear what he has to say and just the study that he's been going through and all that. So let's listen in. All right. Can we first give it up for your youth pastor? All right. Aww. Give it up for Cam. Now, everybody, everybody in the room. All right. Okay. I see you. I see, you're not clapping. Start clapping. All right. All right. We love Kim. Uh, she's an awesome youth pastor. You guys are blessed to have Kim as a youth pastor. Uh, I just want to share a few thoughts with you guys before we get into some Q&A. So when this whole uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, end of the world type stuff started <laughs> happening, um, I felt like God put on my heart the story of Peter in the boat and Jesus walks out to him on the water in the boat. And so I don't know if you guys know that story, if you're familiar with that, but that story is accounted for in Matthew chapter 14. Um, so it comes right after Matthew chapter 13 for those who are searching for it. There we go. Um, but Matthew chapter 14, and I'm going to read the story to you. If you have your U version Bible on your phone, pull it up. Matthew 14, uh, we're going to start at, at uh, verse 22. And I, I'm still digging through this and still figuring out the fullness of why God put this on my heart for this time. But I want to share a few thoughts with you guys uh, um, that, that I feel like during this time, uh, that this story speaks to us. Um, I feel like there's still more God wants to speak to us through this story, mm -hmm. uh, speak to me through this story. But here's just kind of my early thoughts on this story in light of where we're at. So I call this a uh, little short devotional crisis care. Perfect. Crisis care. We're in the middle of a crisis. <laughs> we need to they care. both start with C. You oh, see what I did there? Crisis oh, care. Yeah. yeah. All right, Matthew 14, 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. They were in fear. 
But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. We'll stop there. Even as I was reading that, I felt like there was even more things that popped out to me. And, and maybe as you read that le later uh, after this, there's some things that pop out to you. Circle it. Write the little notes right there so you don't forget. That's God speaking to you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. But let me share some of the things that, that I felt him speak to me earlier as I was reading through this passage. So um, crisis care. What to do when you're in a crisis. That's what I feel like is happening here. So the disciples are on the boat. They're on, the, they're on this lake. And they're in the middle of a storm, okay? I assume this boat was pretty small. Um, I had an opportunity to go to Israel, which was super, mm -hmm. super cool. Uh, but they had a boat from the time of Jesus, okay? It was just a shell of the boat, but you could see the size of it. And like the fishing boats that you see on the lakes here in South Dakota, that's the size it was. Maybe it was a little deeper. Some of those fishing boats are, yeah. are more flat. But this was a little deeper. But it wasn't like this huge boat. So the disciples are on this small little boat out in the middle of the water, and the waves and the wind are blowing up. The lake that they were in was a much bigger lake than what we have here in, in uh, near Sioux Falls and near Yankton even, although you guys have the river. That's pretty yeah. big. Um, but it, it was a small boat, big waves, big wind, big storm. They're freaking out a little bit. And all of a sudden, if they're not already afraid, they see a ghost walking on the water out to them. Now, I would assume, it's not in the Bible, but I would assume that they've never seen somebody walking on water before. One would think. I know. I've watched David Copperfield, so <laughs> I do know Moment that other people there. walk on water. Uh, yeah, he's an illusionist, <laughs> but um, but they were they were freaked out. So they see Jesus coming to them, and and then we saw what happened in the story as it played out there. So I just want to pull out a couple quick things before we get to the, the Q&A. Mm -hmm. um, first thing is this. No matter your crisis, so no matter what you're going through, no matter the crisis you're facing, whether it's this coronavirus, whether it's boredom, uh, whether it's a relationship is issue, maybe it's a problem at, at school when you used to be in school, if you remember those days, uh, a problem you were facing in school, uh, maybe it's not knowing what's what your future holds, all those kinds of things. No matter your crisis, first of all, understand that God sees you. Yeah. No matter your crisis, God sees you. So it, it said there, if I can go back, um, during the, uh, let's see, the, the boat was being beat up and all of that kind of thing. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them on the lake. So Jesus was off by himself praying. They're way out in the middle of the lake, in the middle of the storm. And if it's a bad storm, he probably can't even see them. Yeah. But he knew what was going on in their life. He knew they were afraid. He knew the crisis that was happening. And so he went out to them. No matter what's going on in your life, you've got to know Jesus sees it. Yeah. He knows what's going on. He sees what's happening in your life. And uh, inevitably, he's there with you. He wants to be there with you. Now, he doesn't force himself on us, but we have to let him in. We have to give him the opportunity to come and be in the middle of our situation. And once they found out that it was Jesus, they were grateful that it was Jesus who was there, right? They wanted Jesus with him, with them. Uh, and they, they called out to him. And at the end, they praised him once they realized, yes, this truly was the Son of God. Um, but they, they, Jesus saw them. He saw their situation. And I want you guys to know tonight, he sees what's going on in your life. The big things, the little things, Jesus sees what's happening in your life. So uh, no matter your crisis, God sees you, and he will do whatever it takes to come to you. Jesus walked on water. Yeah. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, like, obviously for us it would be a huge yeah. deal. But even for Jesus, that's one of the yeah. miracles, like, of, of who he is. He was fully God, but he was fully man. So he walked out on water to get to them. Whatever it takes, he got to them in their moment of need, in their moment of crisis, in their moment of fear. So tonight, sitting at your computer, watching on your phone, watching on your iPad, if you're in the middle of crisis, Jesus sees you, and he wants to come near to you. So I think that's pretty cool. Next, no matter your crisis, take courage. Take courage. Jesus said in verse 27, Jesus immediately said to the, the disciples on the boat, he said, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. 
I think that's that's an interesting way to say it. Take courage yeah. instead of like be brave or don't yeah. be scared or have faith. He says, take courage. Take is like an action. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna go. I'm gonna that's take right. your phone. Right. <laughs> I, you have to do something. Yeah. So courage isn't just this feeling. Right. You have to do something with it. It's an action. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take courage. So no matter your crisis, take courage. What does that mean? It, it's like it's like Jesus is saying, prove your faith. Prove that you have bravery. Prove that you have courage. Here's the way that I was kind of thinking about it. If you trusted in God in the middle of this crisis, what would you do? Not what would you think, not what would you feel, but what would you do? So just to be honest with you, right now, our, my wife and I were trying to sell our house. We haven't put it up on the market, but the last couple months we've been cleaning the house, doing some projects. We have like three-fourths of our stuff moved out yeah. to storage. And so like we're right on the verge of, of listing our house for sale. We're not moving. We're just finding another house here in town. And uh, the, uh, the chaos that's going on, this crisis that's going on, obviously it's affecting the markets. And it's a little nerve-wracking. It's a little scary. But I have to take courage, yeah. which means I've got to walk in faith, not just say, well, I have faith. What am I going to do with my faith? And and we did. We were wise. We've talked about it. We've prayed about it. We've done the research and tried to figure out, is this a wise decision? But all of that is us taking courage. And now our, our real taking courage moment is here in the next week or so, we're going to put our house on the market. So yes, there's a chance we could sell our house, not have another house to move into because people decide they're not going to sell their house. Yeah. And in the middle of this financial upheaval, we're in this kind of crisis of our own. And, and uh, so we feel that, but yet I'm going to trust Jesus. I know this is what he wants for us. So I'm going to trust him and I'm going to not just sit back and let him figure it all out, even though he does, right? But I'm going to take courage. I'm going to do something. So in the middle of your crisis, take courage. What does that look like for you? So what are you facing? Maybe it's just this being home and not really having friends, not having connection. Yeah. Don't just sit back and mope and like be lazy but engage. Take courage. Do something. Step out. If Jesus is king, which he is, yeah. and if Jesus is still in control, which he is, and this doesn't scare him at all, which it doesn't, then do something. Take courage. Don't sit back in fear. Don't just stay in the boat and cower in the bottom of the boat and be in fear, but take courage. So what does that look like for you? I would encourage you, get engaged at 180. I know you guys can't get together, but these Wednesday nights are a great opportunity for, for you to connect. But there's also things during the week that Pastor Kim is doing that you can engage through, um, what, Instagram yep. um, and Facebook. And Facebook. Yep. So there's different things that, that she's doing just to connect with you guys. Do something. Yep. If you're not doing anything else, do something. And especially when it's in relationship to your church family, um, man, that's a great connection to have. So yep. you're going to want to make sure that you keep that connection. So no matter your crisis, take courage. Number three, no matter your crisis, Keep your eyes on Jesus. So we, we already said that we know Jesus sees us. Yeah. But then in the middle of it, it's easy for us to start looking at the waves and the wind yeah. and all that. And that's what happened here, yeah. right? Peter gets out of the boat, starts walking to Jesus, and he looks down and he sees the waves. And he sees yeah. the wind. And he sees the shark. Well, okay, there, it was a lake. There probably wasn't a shark. <laughs> but he sees this chaos going yeah. on around him. And he's like, this is impossible. Right. It didn't work in his brain. And that fear crept back in and he began to sink. And it says that Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. I don't know how far under Peter got. Right. I'm thinking Peter got in enough to drink a little bit of water. Yeah. I think he got down to where he was really scared because what does it say? He cries out. Uh, he cried out for Jesus. He said, Lord, save me. And you can almost hear it in a gurgle. Lord, you yeah. know, he, he, I mean, that is a crisis moment right there. But what did he do in that moment? He had taken his eyes off Jesus. But in the moment of greatest need, he brought his eyes back to Jesus. He said, Lord, save me. And so if we can just prevent ourselves from taking our eyes off Jesus in the middle of it, we don't have to go through the nearly drowning part. Yes. Uh, sometimes people are like, man, I, I just don't know what's going on, and it's getting worse, it's getting worse, and I feel like I'm drowning. Well, did you take your eyes off Jesus? That might have been what happened. Yeah. We can't control our situations around us. There's a lot of things that are out of our control. But we can control where our focus is. Mm -hmm. So if we can keep focused on Jesus, if, even in the middle of what's going on right now, it's like we don't know what's going to happen. Um, some of you guys maybe even have part-time jobs, and you, those places are closed. You're not yeah. making any money. Um, you're, maybe it's your senior year, and you're worried about 
if you're going to graduate or what that looks like, what you're going to have to do. Maybe you're not even going to have a graduation. Uh, those kind of things. You're a little nervous about it. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. Yeah. And so he will give us faith. He will give us that courage that we need to take mm -hmm. courage. And so I encourage you, no matter the wind, no matter the waves, keep your eyes on Jesus. It may be overtaking you, but Jesus is enough. Jesus is the answer. He is our ever-present help in time of need. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. He's our ever-present help in time of need. Lord, save me. Boom, Jesus' hand yes. is right there. So just know that he's with you. So just recap real quick. No matter your crisis, God sees you. No matter your crisis, take courage. And no matter your crisis, keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. I think that's good. I think it's a message that we all needed to hear even now, even in whatever situation you're at. Like kind of gave a couple examples, but even I know there's other stuff that we didn't even mention that's going on in your life that we can't necessarily um, call out right now. But I know God probably brought that to your mind, but I know he's bringing comfort in that, this moment right now too. So Amen. I love that. That's so good. Thank yeah. you for that. So we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about a little Q&A. So question oh, oh. and answer with Tyler here. Um, talking about, so last month we went through the overflow book together as circles, as a youth group. And so majority of you guys read that and gave me some feedback on that. So that's pretty cool. Um, our leaders read that as well. And then we also are talking about missions, trips, and giving, all of this. So we're kind of here to ask Tyler some questions about that. About um, He's kind of, we, we talked about even, we, I told them about how our overflow book isn't just, this isn't something that I just came up with and like, hey, 180, let's just read a book. Yeah. But it's actually something that you challenged all of the youth pastors in the state. Yes. And multiple, multiple youth groups are going through this book at the same time. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. So kind of talking about that first to just start us okay. off. Why the overflow book? Yeah. Why speed the light? Why giving? Yeah. All of that. Okay. So uh, let's start with the big picture first. Yeah. Why giving? Um, for God so loved the world that he gave. Mm. So John 3.16, what did God do? He loved us so much that he gave. We want to be like Christ. We want to be like God. Let's give. Now, we aren't asked to give our firstborn. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> but we are asked to be givers. Why? Because God is a giver. And so I think, man, there's so many reasons why we should be givers. Yeah. Um, it, it unlocks faith in us. Yeah. Um, it helps us to not be reliant on the money we have. Yeah. It helps us to not be materialistic. But there's also a lot of good that we can do with it, that we can bless people, we can advance the kingdom of God, we can feed the hungry, and we can, um, we can give clean water to those who need clean water. Um, and so there's just so many different things that we can do. I also think that it is one of the best tools, especially for kids and teenagers, mm -hmm. to move their heart towards God. Okay. So people, yeah. uh, teenagers, kids, they might not have a deep relationship with God, but if they start giving to yeah. Speed the Light or BGMC, that, that when they give, it's going to move their heart. The Bible uh, tells us that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So maybe you don't fully believe in Speed the Light or you don't fully believe in what Speed the Light does. But when you put your treasure there, you put your money there, your heart will follow. And we want our heart to be lined up with God. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. So I'm going to continue to put my money there so my heart yes. follows. Um, and there's tons of scripture where Jesus tells us, you need to be givers. Yep. You know, God, God instructs us to be givers. He instructs us to be generous, uh, that sort of thing. Why speed the light? Um, speed the light is just a creative way for us to continue to flex our giving muscle. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I'd get $10 for my birthday. I knew I had to give $1 to church yeah. because that was for tithe. You always give your 10%. But then after that, it was you can save, you can spend, you can give any more you want. And so it was a challenge for me to, to do a little more. Yeah. We thankfully in our family we were taught you tithe, yep. and so even if it was one dollar or ten dollars, you give ten percent. That just became a habit for me. So tithe isn't hard for me, uh, but I had to practice uh, giving to missions. But it was easier because I had already learned how to yes. tithe. So that's why when yep. we're younger, good. it's good to learn to give. Why speed the light? It helps us to have some handles, so we can see what our money is doing. Um, we can kind of touch and feel. Yes. Uh, what it's like to have an impact globally for the kingdom yeah. of God. Um, so through Speed the Light, it's been around since the 40s, I think. Um, and they've bought airplanes and, and boats and camels even yeah. and all That's kinds cool. of stuff uh, to advance the kingdom of God around the world. And what I think is pretty neat is when it started, uh, people said teenagers can't do anything for missions. Mm -hmm. They don't have any money. Um, and you might still be like, yeah, it's true. I don't <laughs> have any money. 
Um, but statistics tell us that you control a ton of money. And so it might not necessarily be just the money that you earn from a job or the money your parents give you. We never got allowance yeah. when we were growing up. So there's still, I know some do, and that's great, but there's a lot that don't. Um, but the money that you have access to isn't necessarily the money in your pocket. Um, you have influence on your parents because they'll buy you things. And so you have the choice to say, well, instead of buying me that, would you give help me raise money for Speed of Light? So that's how you can control some of that money. Um, and then also other people, like they want to support teenagers in what it, the dream is on their heart. So if I go to a person and say, hey, would you give me money for Speed of Light to do this? Um, they'll be like, eh, you have a job. You could probably get your money yourself. But if a teenager goes to that same person and says, hey, would you help me raise money for this missionary who needs a vehicle? Yes. They would say, man, I a teenager wants to give? Yeah. They're selfless? Yeah, I want to be a That's part of that. Cool. Why overflow? Um, back in 2009, Nine. I couldn't remember what the year <laughs> was, um, Kim was actually in youth group. Um, but across the district, we did this thing called overflow. It actually came from a church in Missouri where they went through this process of learning that God is a God of overflow. And they wrote a short little book on it, the book that you guys read. And in South Dakota, that was the largest year of Speed the Light giving we've ever had up until last year. Yeah. Last year was a record year in South Dakota oh, for Speed the Light. Um, so uh, seeing what God did through that, there was also a lot of testimonies. And I don't mm -hmm. know if Kim's shared her testimonies. Nope. We have video. I might have to dig <laughs> no, that out. I told them about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, Incredible testimonies of when students and leaders said, I want to give to this and I'm going to set a goal that God did miracles in their story, in their life, where money came in from different places, yeah. their car lasted longer so they didn't have to put as much gas in, they didn't have to fix the car, um, they're you know just different, like they got extra birthday money they weren't mm -hmm. supposed to get. Weird things happened because God was a God of overflow. And it was it's and you guys have read the book. Um, there's just so much good content in there that steers our heart and helps us to be more like Christ. So I wanted students across South Dakota to be discipled more in this way, um, but also to help us to maybe see giving in a different way. Uh, what I love about uh, God is he's a God of overflow and obviously what the book is about, but he does everything extravagantly. So like it's not just eh, a little bit of love. No, it's like all the love. Like he gave his son for us, you know. Um, it's not just, um, you know, uh, a little bit of a blessing. He blesses the snot out of us, you know? <laughs> uh, so there's, there's a lot of different things that, that it's just all, Jesus is all in, God is all in. And, and that overflow comes on us, but then also as we're filled up with Jesus, it overflows and affects yeah. others. So I want people yeah. to understand that like, if we truly are overfilled with the Holy spirit and with, with God in our lives, it's going to affect those around us. in one of the major ways is through our giving. Yes. It imp it it impact. I can't talk. It <laughs> impacts people that we won't even see. Yes. Uh, somewhere else around the world. So. so how do you decide then when we give our money to Speed of Light? How a couple things I guess with that. But how do you decide where our Speed of Light money goes? But then also how do you decide? So maybe we don't give, but we go. So mm -hmm. we go on mission trips. So how do you decide then where we go? As okay. Well? So um, uh, the way that Speed the Light the Speed the Light works. I can't talk. Uh, I meet with the National Speed the Light Coordinator once a year um, in January, February, but I can call her up and talk to her on the phone anytime. She's an awesome lady, but she's the one that, that works with the missionaries and gets their projects. There's an approval process and, and everything. So she has this list of what missionaries need. And so then I meet with her and I say, let's take that project. Let's take that project. Let's take that project. So what I like to try to do is I try to find one that's like a a big missionary project. I also like to find a project that is like a, a, a felt need. So bringing food, bringing support, bringing relief, mm -hmm. um, freeing people from sex trafficking, those kind of like needs. And so we did Convoy of Hope last mm -hmm. year. So this year we're going to be partnering with uh, a water well project. You guys will be hearing mm -hmm. a little more about that and, and maybe Pastor Kim's already mentioned some of that. But we're going to be bringing clean water uh, through the organization WorldServe to Africa, and I actually had an opportunity to go to Africa <laughs> to see these uh, water wells, mm. um, but also to see places that didn't have a water well, and to see what water they have and how far they have to go, miles and miles every day just to get some water, and even the water they get isn't great. Wow. So uh, we get to provide a water well cool. um, for Africa, 
And then I also picked up some projects um, that are like bite-sized projects in the nation of, uh, well, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say it, but it's in the Middle East. It's in a kind of a sensitive area in the Middle East. When I email the missionary, I have to use code words um, so that they don't know kind of what this person is doing there. Because what they've done is they've set up a school for refugees. Oh, wow. And so what we're going to do is we're going to buy iPads and smart boards and projectors which are like five hundred dollars, two thousand dollars. You know, not super expensive. Um, in fact, some of your students could probably take one of those yeah, things cool on their own, and this year they could buy that item for a missionary. So, cool. um, but we're going to send those to the, send that money for the Middle East uh, missionaries to be able to purchase those, and we have tons of those. So if you want any of those cool. projects, let yes. me know. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I do it. I see what the need is, see what what kind of like where we're at. Do we have any projects on our list we're still trying to complete? And that kind of thing. So, That's so good. hopefully that answers the question. And missions trips. Oh, missions trips, yeah. So um, we always do El Salvador because yes, we love El Salvador. Yes, we do. I was called to the ministry in El Salvador so on the first year of the missions trip, and so many others have been called to ministry. Yep. Pastor Kim went to um, to missions trip in El Salvador. If you have never been on an overseas trip, you got to do our El Salvador trip. Yeah. We still, at this point, are planning to go. Um, life might change. Yeah. It's all in flux right now. But we're still planning to go this summer. We would love to have you go. Um, why missions trips? Man, they're just such a powerful opportunity for you to get away from life, yeah. get a little disconnected, and be used by God in a way that you've never been used by God before. You hear God more clearly. Yeah. You see God more clearly. Yeah. When you read the Bible out on the mission field, it's like it just comes alive to you even more. And I think it's because we're just so cut off from everything yeah. else. But um, So some of those are, are personal connections. Others are, we, we offered quite a few different trips this summer, yeah. uh, for this coming summer, um, and those were connections with either organizations or the missionary themselves. Mm -hmm. So like we had a connection with a missionary in Guatemala, and so we thought, man, that'd be a good trip. We talked to him and, and set that up. If we can find a place where they're, they already have a good history of bringing teams in yes. to do ministry, then that's a place we like to go because we know it's going to be a good trip. That's so good. That's kind of how we good. pick where, where we go. That's awesome. But, what is like somebody that's... That's maybe like, well, I can't give anything, so this whole thing doesn't apply to me, or I can't go on a mission trip or anything like yeah. that. What would you say to them about giving? Well, I would say take courage. Oh, that's good. You, uh, what? What? Ah, that. Preach, preach up. <laughs> um, here, here. But I, I would just say, uh, like, where where is your faith in yeah. that? If you feel that's like good. God has called you to go, or you feel like God has called you to give, maybe he's even told you, I want you to give this amount yeah. over the next year. Maybe it's $100. Um, I honestly believe that every student can give $100 a year. Yeah. And that's a, a sixth grader. Uh, in fact, I think our BGMC yes. kids, Children's Church, can give $100 a year. Um, and you don't want to be outdone by a Children's Church. Yeah, I can tell you that because right? then it just gets embarrassing. But um, <laughs> um, but, but how, you know, how, how do you do that? Well, I believe if God tells you that, mm -hmm. and you have to give him an opportunity to tell you. He's not yeah. just going to hit you over the head. But pause your spirit, pause your heart. Maybe it's in a service, maybe it's at home, and you say, God, what do you want me to do? And he puts a number on your heart, and it might be bigger than you thought, but now it's your responsibility to make that happen. Now, well, man, that's that's huge. That's big. I don't know how I would ever do that. I don't even have a job. That's where God comes in. Yeah. So there's the us, what can we do? And then there's the what could what could God and us do together if we sacrificed and we you know, God provided these things here and there. How could, what could I do if he did that? Yes. And then what if God did a true miracle? Like all of a sudden I open the mailbox, wow. thousand bucks. Yeah. Those are the three different things I look at when I'm kind of setting my goal is what can I do? What can God and I do together if I sacrifice? Mm. And then what could God do if, if there was a miracle? Mm -hmm. And I, and I just kind of, I don't tell anyone the miracle number. I keep it a secret. <laughs> um, cool. But then you get to see if God comes <laughs> yeah. through. And uh, often he does. And yeah. sometimes it's in a different way than you mm -hmm. expected. Yes. You just, you know, you never thought that would happen. That. But yep. um, so how, how do you give if you don't have money, if you don't have a job? There are people that want to be invested mm -hmm. in you and in what yes. you believe in. Um, there's true. also, you just because you don't have money doesn't mean that other people don't have money. Yeah. So you, you have to remember that. You know, you think about the little kid sitting next to the street with a lemonade stand. Mm -hmm. People have a hard time not stopping and giving money, okay? Yeah. There's things for you, even though you might be an ugly teenager, <laughs> comparatively, I'm not pointing anyone out, yeah. um, but <laughs> even though you're not as cute as that little kid doing lemonade, yeah. there's something like a lemonade stand that you yes. can do. 
there's something that you can do to bring value to somebody else's life. Maybe you're selling something, maybe you're performing yeah. something, maybe you're doing a service for them. If your heart is there and you've heard God speak and you're stepping out and taking courage mm -hmm. and doing something, the money will be there. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's just a the only limiter is is you. It's your creativity. Yep. Uh, it can be your time, but there's still we have way more time than we think we do. Yeah. We're just we kind of lazy sometimes. So yeah. get creative. And if you need help being creative, talk to your youth leaders, talk to Pastor Kim, talk to me, yeah. Google it. How do I raise money for this? Um, you know, the other question is, how do we raise money when we can't talk or touch anybody? Yes. Like we can't be together. Can you can ask yep. that. Yep. So in this crisis, like how do we do that? Think about GoFundMe. Okay. You've heard of that, uh, yeah. uh, that online thing, a GoFundMe page. People can go online and then give to a cause. Typically... Those people never see each other. Yeah. They never touch. So even in normal life, they're not getting sure. together. Yeah. So how does GoFundMe work? Yeah. If if you know, it's the same it's the same scenario. You put out the compelling vision, the story, here's why I'm doing this. Yeah. And and it doesn't have to be a GoFundMe page. I'm not saying everybody do a GoFundMe. I'm using that as an example to say it works. Yeah. You don't have to be together. In fact, I've been kind of stirring some things in my heart about um what does this look like? And I've wondered, I've thought about it. I haven't told anybody this, so you guys get to be the first to hear. But um, I've been thinking about what kind of a challenge could we do during this time mm -hmm. for Speed the Light when we're all cut off from yeah. everybody else? Could, could we do something with students who are at home? Maybe they have more time. Yeah. They can't get out, so it's going to have to be really creative. Uh, this is no joke, okay? On Shark Tank, I like to watch Shark Tank. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> on Shark Tank... There is a guy, he comes up, and he has a piece of paper with a <laughs> penciled out drawing of a stick figure cat. And he goes, I want to draw a cat for you. I want to draw a cat for you. I'm not even kidding you. This guy got tons of money from the sharks what? and now has a company. You can Google this. This is for sure. This is legit, okay? It's for sure. Uh, you, he's, he hand draws these ridiculous pictures of cats, and people pay him money for this, Whoa. and they frame it. So, like, they'll say... My grandpa loved cats. He loved this about cats. And, and so he'll customize it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he likes Star Wars and cats. So he'll make a Star Wars cat. And it's like 25 bucks. He mails it to them. It's just a penciled out drawing <laughs> of a cat. Okay. It's ridiculous, but it's making tons of money. Wow. What is your stupid cat drawing? Okay. There are yeah, some things that you could good. do. You could write out a prayer. Mm -hmm. You could do a drawing. There's things that don't take a lot of time yeah. and energy, but then you post it out on Facebook. You post mm -hmm. it out to your family and friends. Say, hey, I'm, I really believe in this cause. Yes. Speed the light. We're raising money for these missionaries. Would you help me yes. by purchasing this? So I mean, there's some so really good. cool things you can do out there. It's still working in my heart, yeah. but I think there's something that we could do across the 605, um, even though we're locked up right yeah. now. And raise some money for Speed of Light. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, that's so. very cool. What is one last thing either you can encourage us either through this time with our giving going forward, um, maybe missions trips or something like that that's yeah. kind of encouraging for one um, last note? Well, I, I would say I would just speak to like where you guys are at right now. Being at home, not getting out much, not yeah. being able to go have fun much. I, I know you're coming up with excuses to have fun, but it's not like mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Remember, this is short term. Now, short term can be a week. Short term can be two months, yeah. six months. I don't know. But it's short term. Eventually, we will go back to real life. Yeah. So have hope. Have encouragement. Don't get lost in your sorrow or in discouragement or anything. I know you guys are loving hanging out at home and not having to go to school. <laughs> That's good. But you can still get discouraged when you're cut off from people. Oh, yeah. I'm a people person, yeah. so I need people to be around me. Um, but uh, but what I mean about, like, it's it's a short time. It, you know, it's going to be over eventually is... Don't give up on the things you are doing in your faith just because mm -hmm. life has changed. So you, you maybe you're starting to dig into the Word. Maybe you were on a YouVersion Bible yes. plan, um, and, and you, you were being pretty faithful to that. Maybe every couple days you were getting on there. Um, don't let this stop you. In fact, let this push you even further into Jesus. Yeah, I think a big so reason why Jesus is allowing this to happen mm -hmm. is, to, is to draw us into Him oh, more. Yeah. To stop making us reliant on our friends and our money yep. and our jobs and our life and our schedule and our popularity, <laughs> but to rely on Jesus. So yeah. don't give up the things that you were doing. Don't give up going to youth group. And I know yes. it's like, I can't go to youth group. Tune in. Yep. Be engaged. What does it look like to go to church now? It's different. 
but it's not, it hasn't stopped. The yeah. Bible says, do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Mm-hmm. There will be some during this time that are like, you know what? I have a lot more free time. I don't yeah. really want to go to church when church starts back up. And they just start to fade and they don't tune into mm-hmm. services. They don't engage with their leaders. They don't engage with Pastor Kim on on um, on like social media stuff. Some of that stuff is just for fun, yeah, right? It's yeah. not going to get you into heaven or not. Right. But it's keeping that connection because yes. we all need people in our life who are going to hold us accountable, yep. who are going to speak life into us, um, who are going to challenge us, and, and that are going to push us to be the men and women of God that we want to be and that God wants us to be. So don't quit. Don't yeah. stop. Don't use this as an excuse to let off the gas. I'm talking to leaders. I'm talking yep. to students. Press in. Okay. This is a time for us to reevaluate what's most important. And we're all here together on this video. Yeah. So we're, we're all saying this is important. Okay. And if you're not here or if you know somebody who's not here, you need to text them yes. right now. Get out your phone. Text them right now and say you're missing this. Or let them know they're missed. Um, because just because we're not meeting in a building together doesn't mean that we're not the church anymore. We're still the church. Yes. So let's be engaged. I know life is different. I know life is hard. I know life is busy. Be engaged with each other. Um, connect. Reach out to those that are in need. There's some of your friends, church or non-church friends, that are really lonely right yeah. now. And they need a friend. Be a friend. So there's a lot of things that we can be doing during yeah. this time that relate to God, that relate to our faith. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep pressing on. Our next series, and we kind of started it last week, is called Closer. Ah. And so it's kind of going through spiritual disciplines of how to get closer to God and grow our faith. So in this time of that we can't be face-to-face necessarily, that we can still be growing in our faith. It doesn't mean that we have to be, you know, like, this close to be to be learning about God or to be in community. We can still grow closer. So last time we talked about prayer. Um, this next uh, video that's coming up um, in a couple days, we're going to be talking about scripture. I know it's not going to come out on a Wednesday, but there's a lot of really good stuff, and I want to make sure that you guys are connected. So check out that three-minute video, too, that will come later in this week. And keep your distance. We're growing closer. <laughs> closer, closer to God. Oh, Grow to God. closer to God. <laughs> thank you for that clarification. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. I'm just going to pray this out really quickly. Sure. Um, yeah, and God, thank you so much for this time that we could come together. We could come worship together with our 180 Youth Fam. We thank you so much for Pastor Tyler, for him just taking the time to give us a word, give us his wisdom, too, on giving. And I pray that this just propels us forward, God. May this spark an idea in our students that they want to give and give sacrificially, give generously, Lord. Even in this time where it thinks that it, it, we think that we can't go beyond, but God, you are planting something inside our students right now, God. An idea, um, a thought, a love for somebody, or a way to reach out and give, God. So thank you so much for that, Lord. And I pray that this time uh, that we can grow closer to you, that we have the time, we take the time to just spend in your presence, spend praying or scripture or like this, just talking. I thank you so much, and I pray that you bless the rest of our night and bless our discussions that are going to happen. And we just love you so much, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tyler, so yeah. much for joining us. It's awesome to be here. And Thanks for being here. Yes. You. No, no, not you. You. <laughs> Looking at you. No, the one behind you. Yeah. You. Okay. And make sure <laughs> that you guys are jumping on our Zoom discussion. We are going to start that here in just a few minutes. So if you need the ID for that or the password for that, make sure that you ask your circle leader or you can even text me and get that too. We're just excited to see you and just talk face to face even. Good <laughs> to be guys. with you guys tonight. Have an awesome night.